talk about quickly regarding my guy Matthew Williams at Givenchy and I'm happy to see because there was a I felt concentrated effort or concerted effort it felt like to get him the F out of here at Givenchy I don't know why exactly because he comes across as a pretty nice dude he's somebody that from I've seen online and from own experience seems to be very personable he replies to flipping DMs and um, whether it's a double tap whether it's a little comment he seems to be somebody that's very plugged in with youth culture he actively takes part in social media and all that good stuff and just generally seems to be a good egg in terms of how he kind of carries himself in the flipping cutthroat backstabby way a backstabby industry of fashion in general and considering he's somebody that comes from the the school or the collective of Virgil's kind of extended friends and somebody who has no formal training and kind of came into it via kind of streetwear but not really mostly obviously having the experience of working um, with Lady Gaga and doing a lot of her kind of costume design and whatnot and then doing some fashion bits here and there and consulting with Yeezy and obviously doing the stuff that he was doing with um, the Bincho stuff but he essentially came into it and got thrown into the deep end he was always somebody that had really good style really good taste obviously with stuff that he's doing with the leaks but not somebody you would ever say you could envision envision somebody being a head of a house so when he got the job at Givenchy I was totally surprised I'm not gonna lie but I always thought he could also do it pretty well because he just seemed like somebody who was learning and kind of building on his repertoire of skills in real time very quickly you look at the early designs of Elix and you look at the stuff that they're producing now and it's really really improved exponentially so I could only imagine the stuff that he's learned from that and he's kind of carried over onto Givenchy and obviously during Fashion Week for whatever reason maybe because the Collections weren't necessary to people's tastes because you have to you have to be honest. Paris Fashion Week is the it's the World Cup, it's the Champions League, it's the best, best, best of the best. So sometimes even if you're mediocre, you look really, really, or if you're average, you look really bad compared to everybody else because everybody else's levels are so high. So it's hard to kind of compete. But I like the fact that he's competing. I love the fact that he's trying to um, carve his own little niche out there with Givenchy, especially considering how dead the brand was for a long time. Um, you know the, the you know the best period of Givenchy was definitely during Ricardo Tisci's time but he's doing his best um, he's trying new ideas he's clearly got something going on there he's got a hold of some element of youth culture he's made Givenchy covetable and desirable desirable again I've never actually felt or seen any of the stuff in real life but from what I can what I can tell and from what I've read online about people buying stuff and you know pick pickups they've been posting on Reddit and whatnot people are very impressed um, with the detail and the quality of the garment so clearly he's doing something right and it felt like the effort to get him out of there wasn't necessarily grounded in anything apart from just people being bored of what he's making and wanting to see their favorite in the job I didn't necessarily think he deserved being kicked out because he's doing a bad job it's just because people just didn't like what they saw they weren't necessarily fans of streetwear which to me, especially in Paris Fashion Week setting, feels always like a dog whistle whenever they're like, oh, we don't want streetwear, we want to return to tailoring. It always feels like a dog whistle to get the blacks and the browns and the freaks and the weirdos out of here so they can have the conventional, standard, boring, fashion-educated people, you know, put in runway, put in flipping, you know, themes and mood boards down the flipping runway and trying to sell that in stores and it doesn't work, but obviously it appears all the flipping purists and whatnot. But... There is some good news. It looks like Givenchy is going from shrimp to shrimp because they've announced his collaboration with Bistre, another one who you would say would has close connections with Virgil and maybe there's somebody that maybe Virgil kind of introduced Matthew Williams to so his legacy lives on. Imagine taking a shock but making it fucking denim. Like, it looks like it's denim. I'm pretty, is it denim or is it just like leather material made to look like denim? Because that looks fucking insane regardless of your website. So let's put this on big screen so we can see the entire thing. You've got these denim shark boots with number one and a good little peek there at the Varsity Jack. It looks like a denim mini skirt, maybe. Next slide, you've got an oversized polo here with the Bistroy and Givenchy logo, which I think will do numbers. The, the polo has like an elongated back here. I love the look of that. It's giving Jersey Shore in slight bits, but I do like it. This choker thing with the ball is pretty decent too. Hopefully that gets sold as well. I like that. I, look, I like the look of that as also. There's work gloves, which everybody seems to be doing nowadays. Everyone's trying to LARP and trying to cosplay as, work, as a working man or as a working individual in general. I think there's something quite emasculating about sitting down like I do on a laptop and working for 
from home and tapping your little flipping, you know, soft, uh, non hard working hands on the keyboard and then crying and complaining that you don't have enough almond milk to put in your coffee. So you want to give yourself this idea that you're actually a hard working man with putting on working gloves and feeling like you're toiling in the fields or you're working on a construction site or you're cutting wood and shit. It's like, come on, man. You're picking up a two grand backpack with a five grand laptop, you know, to put on your back of your 200 pound polo shirt it's not that bad life isn't that bad but i like them those shoes that he put out they kind of look like astro turfs but like you know bulbous astro turfs in in a in, in a way i hate them i would never wear them myself but i have to be honest i like the fact that he does something fresh with the footwear i'm sure it's not all matthew williams i'm sure there's a footwear designer that probably works in-house at Givenchy that helps to design the shapes but i like that the shapes are very Givenchy. they're very recognizable in terms of what they look like the high arch how bulbous they are the roundness of it bloody blah, blah the lines on it but you know and obviously it's not for me clearly but i just like how unique they look there's nothing there's nothing on the market right now that looks like these Givenchy sneakers and that for me is a success because for the most part everybody's out there just like you know making their own interpretation of a nike of a new balance and they're not really adding anything interesting to the conversation so when he's doing something new and fresh i'm gonna rate it um you got here a global peace sweatshirt that looks pretty cool i like that i'm not gonna lie that looks pretty cool I love, I love the addition with the Givenchy logo in the squares with the Bistroy B in the two brackets. The only thing I don't like about the Bistroy thing, I think it's not their fault, but that corny, terrible, lame, um, lacking in inspiration and source flipping meme page, mood board thing hidden. It feels like the logo is slightly dissimilar. So when I see B, I always sometimes think it's going to be that H thing. And I wonder if... I'm sure b Stray came beforehand because those guys have been in the industry and the scene for a while. I remember seeing them on Instagram ages ago before maybe the brand really blew up. But for some reason, Hidden and b Stray feel like they had the same logo. Sometimes when I see it, it kind of feels like I get those shudders. I'm like, oh my God, no way did they collaborate with Flippin' Givenchy. They got no source. So it's good to see that it's b Stray. And then you've got a nice little bag here also. That's given that's given Y2K, which is kind of the flavor of the month at the moment. I feel like all that Y2K stuff is going to age terribly very soon, and it it kind of feels like because it's nice to see some of the kids going vintage and buying a lot of the Y2K stuff on eBay or on Depop or going to thrift stores and buying them. But the ones who are buying re kind of like ready-made new y2k type clothing they're gonna look very dated in a couple of years when the culture shifts again and it's a whole new different sort of aesthetic that people are going for um i like this varsity jacket i think bistro do decent varsity jackets anyway and i like the addition of all these patches all over it it looks flipping brilliant i'm not sure what any of this means in general in terms of the bumblebee and the looks like a women hanging around some sort of bottle thing the hand there i don't know what's going on but i like it regardless there's a headband oh no it's a hat actually isn't it it's a hat with ear flaps that go over it it's on leather it looks pretty sick i love the addition of that the styling is great the casting is awesome of course the patches extend onto this denim suit that looks brilliant the denim suit reminds me slightly of a suit that um matthew williams did for a leaks a while ago that was very popular there's plenty of fakes of it at the moment and it was the one that i thought was made by maybe made by black memes and it was sort of like cut up into little it, i think if what was it made i think maybe it was like cut into it was like slit loads of slits and then loads of fraying that was kind of around all the legs and all the arms and stuff if you remember it if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about um and then there's a, I like this big massive oversized bag and tote which i'm always a bigger bear fan of the shoes i don't think are probably part of the collection i'm not really too sure maybe these are models own maybe the Givenchy also I'm not too sure but I like the the size of that tote bag I also like the fact that the tote bag has this strap shoulder strap on the top which I'm always a big fan of to kind of sling um across your body and carry all your flipping little bits and pieces you know Uniqlo socks and rolled up beanies a chapstick and whatnot but yeah this lookbook and the styling of the lookbook is so good this ex this over exaggerated afro thing going on here with the Givenchy shades that I'm, I'm hoping that are part of the Beast Ray collaboration and it's hot pink with the black is super awesome this uh hoodie that is cut 
um, like a crop top is great. You got bistro gloves here, work gloves again going on. Also, so that kind of um, that thing I thought that was a choker with the pearls is maybe just a bracelet that they put on the model as a neck piece, maybe as a styling. So it might not be an actual necklace. That might be cool. Uh, you got more work gloves here. They look pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of these with a B on them and a the hat jumper you got these kind of satin looking well there's that fur i'm not too sure what those pants look like but they look cool the shoes remind me of the raf simmons moon boots from c years ago they got that kind of feel to them i'm not too sure if they're the same things but they look pretty decent i think she was she had a good budget to make the both of them and then they got a hoodie here um that looks pretty sick that is got two hoods on it which is flipping amazing and you got them wearing the denim shark booty type things on as well so i love that hoodie that hoodie would look pretty sick actually walking around with a hoodie that says gone deaf with two hoods on it that looks pretty sick i like that i really really like that um i think the quirky kind of off kilter nature of b Stroy sort of suits what Givenchy are doing there's obviously synergy there with them probably being friends in the industry or knowing of each other for a while there's obviously the virtual connection there as well and i love it anyway because again it's a good it's another good uh point to raise in terms of you know Givenchy and Matthew Williams just understanding how to tap into youth culture and get what they kind of want and stuff right they've got a real handle on it that's something that you cannot deny when it comes to them let's see if we can see the collection yeah there it is I want to see how what the prices of this entire thing is new arrivals Bistro and Givenchy oh it's a it's a bucket hat with a mask okay that's what it is that's a bucket hat interesting how you can just label stuff what you want right I would never understand I would never think this would be a bucket hat it kind of looks like a hat with ear flaps not a bucket hat but i guess you know technically there's some technicality around that could turn a bucket hat but regardless it's sold out 920 dollars and it's completely gone in all sizes so bravo to be and matthew williams for absolutely pushing units out there you got these 4g sunglasses which i think okay these are sold out also it looks like or they're, oh no, they're not out yet at the moment maybe they're sold out, i'm not too sure but these look pretty awesome what what's all colors you can only, you only got silver and gray here what's the other color okay it comes in black and a havana colorway these look pretty cool so mirrored lenses nice and big with the g's on the side of it you know the vibes they look pretty awesome i love everything about them also you got the regular jeans and um, with the patchworks all over them you've got hexagonal what is that you got a card oh wow a card case i love the look of that that looks pretty cool so doesn't it You've got an oversized t-shirt, you've got the, the hoodie. Okay, see, I like that they've done with the lookbook where they've kind of, they've taken bits and pieces of the, this is the opposite of what Emily Oberg was doing with Sporty and Rich, which is just you know, including a flipping overcoat that you're not going to sell in the lookbook just to make it look cool. They're taking stuff they're actually selling, like this hoodie, and then cutting it into a crop top just to make it look cool for the lookbook. I love that kind of sort of stuff. So you can buy it, obviously, but then the actual crop top thing doesn't exist but if you want to you can take that and then cut it yourself if you want to so it's kind of giving you a styling tip for yourself if you want to edit it you got the gone dev t-shirt you got double layered top here you got the bistro Givenchy socks which i'm surprised are still in stock because these are probably the cheapest thing right low entry yeah there's only one size 39 to 42 in terms of buying them what other color is it they come in they've got a citrus green you got black uh, no white okay no white in those ones but still i like the look of them and then if you continue down i want to see i want to see that hoodie the double-headed hoodie if they have that in stock not yet we got Givenchy with bistro with a plus sign you got some shorts here for 990 dollars which is wild uh you got a track top you got the gp shirt which i like gp sweat which i like and a double hooded over, okay the double headed oversized hoodie is one thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars what are those shoes by the way those shoes look very good isn't it i love those boots those boots are right up my alley wow i wonder what those boots are but that oversized hoodie looks that look is just brilliant though and it come on i know some of you probably won't be a fan of it but i love this there's a classic hoodie with like a other hoodie on the side of it your arm one arm is completely elongated off the side i kind of would have liked maybe just having two hoods and another and another head another kind of hole here to pop your head through so you've got the two hoods sitting on either side of your shoulder but i do like this kind of weird off kilter sort of melted effect you got going on with the other sleeve being a little bit elongated and long that looks pretty cool i'm not going to lie also but i love that boot did it show you what other people's wearing that no, doesn't show you but i'd love to know what that boot is 
I don't think it's part of the collection actually. I think it's just a random thing that they're sending there because there's no more then left. But yeah, it looks like it's all being sold well. Some of it is still coming soon, but it's cool to see a small kind of upstart brand in Bistro be able to collaborate with the house actually eventually. And this is the thing why it's important to have people from non-traditional backgrounds, sorry, taking up jobs in fashion because it leads to far more interesting collaborations and maybe approaches to presenting clothes on that level. Because if you were to get somebody that had a conventional, you would say, fashion education, would they want to collaborate with Bistro? Probably not. But when you get somebody that has come from screen printing t-shirts, costume designing for Lady Gaga, you know, doing their own brand on the side, working it up to be a fully fledged brand in itself that also shows at Paris Fashion Week, and then you give them the keys to a luxury house at Givenchy, they might approach it differently and include some, you know, some kind of um, not so well known artists, not so well known brands um, who are really affecting culture, who are really kind of sparking conversation, debate, styles, inspiration, all that kind of good stuff. And then that might go on to inspire a whole generation of kids coming up that might see this sort of stuff. It's pretty cool. And it kind of offers a, a fresh, kind of you know outlook on these sort of things so hopefully it becomes successful and it continues on and they continue to do more and more as the years progress because it'll be cool to see them continue that relationship man it's a really cool way in a roundabout way to also honor Virgil's legacy because he would be I'd imagine super proud to see Bistro working with Givenchy on that level man because he's been championing and talking about those guys for a while